Charlotte. Today I'm going to show you how I made this Queen Charlotte cake from Bridgerton. It's so oh god, it's so. I love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to Kuali Pops. My name is Sandra Rhymes. Shonda. My name is Sandra Rhymes. My name is Sandra Rhymes. My name is Shonda Rhymes. Idiot! You don't even know the Queen's thing? Hey everyone, welcome back to Kuali Pops. My name is Shonda Rhymes. I got it, yes. And today we are making the Queen from Bridgerton. I'm excited about this. It's so weird because I'm shooting this at the beginning, but the thumbnail already shows the final product. So I don't know what you saw. <laughs> I loved the second season. I actually think it was better than the first. I decided to make the queen because I'm just, I really want to make the hair. It's going to be massive. I love it. It's definitely going to be a challenge and I'm ready for it. Hopefully it turns out nice. I can't wait for the queen spinoff. So let's get started. To start this, I've got an acrylic disc. I'm using some styrofoam to create the bottom of her head so that I don't have to use that much cake. If you don't want to use styrofoam, you can use Rice Krispies treats, but I'm going to be creating a lot of head sculpts this year, so I found something that I can reuse. For this cake, I actually am using Bridgerton colors. I just I went on Google Images and I asked for a color palette that matches Bridgerton dresses. So I've got yellow, which is basically the vanilla cake without any food coloring. We got violet, a royal purple. Oh, and you can't see this because there's so much crust, but this is like a baby blue, except it's more muted. So when you cut into this, you're gonna see all of these beautiful colors. It's gonna look gorgeous. So I'm starting with violet and this is a 10 inch round cake. Now I'm gonna add buttercream in between this layer and I'm just gonna repeat this with my yellow cake, the royal purple, and then my blue. And usually I work on like two or three cakes a week. You know, next week I'm gonna be working on Doctor Strange and, and there's a ton of other movies that I really wanna to get to. So I'm gonna try to get this out as fast as possible, which is gonna be easy since it's the only thing I'm gonna be working on. Hey, last cake. Going on. Is this stable? Okay, it's pretty stable. Yay! So this is our cake so far. I was worried about the height, but it's really just a four layer cake. It only looks super tall because of all the stuff underneath it. The next thing I'm gonna do is carve, and I don't think I need to do that much carving. I need all of the volume I can get because of her hair. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start to carve. I just realized I don't really need to carve that much of the cake. What I do need to do is add more cake. So I'm going to add buttercream to the side of this and then just glue on <laughs> a cake that I had left over. Oh, I'm so glad I baked the extra because I definitely needed it for this. So I just finished the carving and I made it smaller than my reference picture so that I can account for all the buttercream I'm gonna be using to create her hair. Just looking at this now, I wanna do Marge Simpson. I wanna do Marge Simpson. I wanna do the Bride of Frankenstein. I wanna do a cone head. I wanna do everything. It's just looking really good. The more that I work on this, the more excited that I'm getting. And then I'm gonna to get to like the part where I'm creating the face and I'm like, you know what? I'm not excited anymore. <laughs> but now that my carve is done, I'm gonna cover my entire cake with a crumb coat. Just work my way all the way around. Then I'm gonna put this in the fridge to set up and start to cover my cake with its final coat of buttercream. So I'm gonna be using skin tone buttercream to create her face. And then I'm gonna cover the rest of the cake with gray buttercream to create her hair. That's what I'm aiming for. So I covered Queen Charlotte's face with a generous amount of buttercream. And I'm thinking that maybe I should just stop here and say that this is her when she got stung by a bee. Just like your dad, Bridgerton's. Oh. Now I'm gonna cover her hair with gray buttercream, but I'm gonna do that after I'm more comfortable with the sculpt of her face. Now this face went through like five or six different sculpts. I think the first one is one of the most important because it's where you decide the proportions of her face. If her nose is just like one centimeter lower than it should be, or her eyes are one centimeter higher, it's very noticeable when you're dealing with a real person. So I spent a lot of time on this. Now when I was happy with that, I started to add gray buttercream and I'm adding a very thin coat. I'm gonna add another coat of buttercream with a piping bag. And I'm using this so I can really start to shape this like classic, Amy Winehouse looking beehive do. Then I gave her some gumball eyes. 
My problem with this is usually I don't push the gumballs far enough, so the faces look kind of flat. But I think I did a good job here. I could have pushed them in probably a little bit more, but yeah, they look fine. After that, I did a little more sculpting on her hair. So this is what we have so far. Now I just bought these silicone tools. I think their makeup brushes, using them on her face, just was so much better than a paintbrush. And when I'm using a paintbrush, usually I'm very careful because I'm scared that one of the bristles is gonna like get left on the buttercream. But with this, I don't have to worry about that. And I get a much smoother texture. I really like the sculpt that I created for her hair, but I kind of had to make up the back. I looked at a ton of pictures on Google Images and none of them show me what the back is supposed to look like. The next thing I'm going to do is add texture. So I'm going to use my image and a piping bag. Uh, I'm just going to create some lines so that it looks like hair texture. Then I'm going to go over it with a paintbrush and some softened buttercream and just blend it into the rest of the piece. It's basically what I did with my Sonic cake, but far more complicated. I had to do this in like four different sections because my cake kept getting warm. This is a lot of hair. But when I was finished with that, it was time to add my finishing touches. So I used buttercream to give her her lip color and her eyebrows. I cut parchment paper into the perfect shape, put them on, peeled them off, and then filled in my shape with charcoal gray buttercream. I used edible color dust to give her some makeup and to finish her eyes, and then I added fondant. Now I could have made this collar with buttercream, but I just spent a whole bunch of time working on this girl's hair, so I took a shortcut. I used my rose fondant mold to create a collar. I also created some violet roses and just scattered them on her hair to give it more color. And to finish this, we've got two fondant earrings and last but not least, Queen Charlotte's beautiful crown. Voila, my Queen Charlotte cake is complete. What do you think? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the process. I love the technique. I love the final product. It just, oh my gosh. It was so fun to make and it was such a challenge. I thought this cake would be like three to four days max. It took me eight days <laughs> to finish this project. Working with buttercream slows down the process so much. With fondant, if the buttercream underneath the fondant gets soft and you brush against the fondant, it's fine. But when you brush against soft buttercream, it loses its shape. So having to put this in the fridge, let it set up for like an hour and a half and then start to work on it again really slowed me down. But one of the things that I usually have trouble with when I'm working with fondant is that I never spend time away from the cake. And I actually have to force myself to walk around the block so that I can look at the cake with fresh eyes. Because I had to put the cake in the fridge several times, I always found something new that I needed to fix which changed the proportions of her face and made it look more realistic. So it was like good and bad. Having to create her hair, I already said that I want to do Marge, I want to do the Bride of Frankenstein, but the fact that I'm able to create like a realistic face, it just opens up the possibilities to what I can do next. Not only can I create characters, but I can create celebrities. Oh my gosh, imagine Beyonce. <laughs> That'd be so good. Now the next two cakes that I'm gonna be attempting are going to be head sculpts. But I won't have to be creating this massive hairdo because I'm gonna be creating Obi-Wan Kenobi and Doctor Strange. So if you wanna see all of that in real time, make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all of my social media stuff. I do really wanna know, now that we know what I can do, what do you want me to make next? What person, what character, what celebrity would you like to see? Let me know down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you, I'll see you very soon. Bye. The four layer cake that I used to create Queen Charlotte was not enough and I didn't want to bake anymore so I was like, should I just use the bread? I mean, I got some sourdough on the fridge, maybe I could just glue it to the cake with a little buttercream. But then I realized that I had leftover cake in the fridge so I used that. But I was so close to using my sourdough. <laughs> Buttercream gets really dark when it's sitting in your fridge for a couple of days. So to create Queen Charlotte's skin tone, I started with a buttercream that was three shades lighter than I had intended. So that hopefully, fingers crossed, it would become the shade I actually needed when it was sitting in the fridge. And it worked. Oh my gosh, should I make another Bridgerton character? 
Queen Charlotte's hair was a whole other thing. I thought that sculpting her face was gonna be the hardest part of this cake, but adding hair texture to this like Amy Winehouse wig was so hard. The texture that I ended up with still looks a little cartoonish, but the realistic face makes up for it. Finishing my Queen Charlotte cake gave me life. Creating realistic people is scary, but the fact that I got more right on this face than I did wrong makes me want to create another person. So who should I make next? Rihanna or Beyonce? This is me trying to look cute while I'm showcasing my cake. And this is actually me. God, what a cry. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. I made this, it's so beautiful. Creating Queen Charlotte? was so much fun, but and I didn't cry. Usually when I'm making a hard cake, there's at least one point when I want to look in the mirror and just yell at myself, you're not good enough. <laughs> but I didn't do that. I just, I pretended that I believed in myself and then eventually I did. And you just gotta fake it till you make it. Do you guys ever feel like you have imposter syndrome? 